Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Happy people. <laughs> Again, the Lord said, you know, I am glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. So I hope that uh, we are all glad that we are here because the Lord is glad with all of us as we come together and worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me just turn this on. Okay. For those who are joining us in Zoom, um, a blessed good morning to all of you. Okay, good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. I am always excited <laughs> every day because every day is a blessing. As I always say, every morning is a blessing. All right, so this morning, my dear brethren, I will uh, show two slides, and there's a word written on it, and what comes to mind? Okay. Just think of a word, the first word that comes to mind when I flash this, uh, these words before you. You can say it aloud, or you can keep it uh, to yourself. God is... All right, check. The next one would be, the cross reminds us of God's, amen, amen, amen. So, God is love and the cross reminds us of God's love. Now, well, when we see the word God is, we always connect love. And when we see the, the cross, it reminds us of God's love. You know, that's what uh, normal people would see. And people would connect the word love with those words. And, uh, and we know it. And that's, that's actually factual. That is true. God is love indeed. And the cross reminds us of God's love. Those are true. Now, because the central, one of the central messages of the Bible is about God's love. Right? And uh, one of the well-known verses in the Bible is John 3.16. And uh, the very first words of that verse tells us that for God so love the world, the world. So there is love and there is God. So we associate God with love. And uh, when we talk of the greatest command, okay, the greatest command is to love God. Okay? So there is love and there is God. And you can also see that in your uh, bumper stickers. God is love. But you don't see this in the bumper stickers. <laughs> you don't see that. But we see God is love. Okay? So, those, those words are highly publicized. So that's why through repetition and since we were kids, you know, that's what's being sold to us. God is love. And it reinforces in our mind the message that God is love because of those uh, repetition. But let me ask this. How about God is justice? How about that? And how about the cross reminds us of God's justice? How about that? Right? Now, the word justice and God is justice and the cross is reminds us of God's justice. Is, it is not that so popular with that of God is love. And with that of the cross reminds us of God's love. Not that popular, right? Because it's not well that publicized in a way. And you don't see in bumper stickers, God is justice. You don't see that. I haven't, I haven't seen that. In my 50 years of existence, I haven't seen God is justice. God is love, often that I would see. So, it is not highly publicized that of God is love. And uh, this morning, we will expound on these things you know, as we go through with our lessons. And our part of the scripture reading, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. 
loving devotion and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who know the joyful sound, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. The righteousness of God means his actions, his decisions are fair. They are upright. They are just. And they are founded upon God's love. Because God is indeed love. Right? And we will see this morning how justice and how love work alongside each other with these two important gifts that God gave to mankind. So we will discuss two important gifts that God has given to us. We will discuss love with that alongside justice with those two gifts. So this morning, our lesson will be love and justice, the two sides of God. Now, let us first talk about the first gift, one of the first important gifts of God to us, our free will. Have you ever, have you ever uh, thought that free will, your freedom of choice, is one of the best gifts that God has given you? Our free will. Love and free will. Do we see God's love in our free will? Do we see God's love in our freedom of choice? Have we ever connected our free will with that of God's love? Have we ever thought about that? Now, free will, as they say, is our ability to choose between good and evil, between right and wrong. So that's the basic uh, idea of free will between God's desire and our desire, between God's desire and my desire. Free will is a wonderful gift of freedom from God resulting from his love for us. Now, here is my test. Now, here is my test of the beauty of free will. A simple test so that you could know the, this wonderful gift and the beauty of free will. How would you like to spend your life waking every day beside the person you despise as husband and wife? How do you like that? How do you like that? You don't like it, right? I see some people shaking their heads. Of course, of course, we don't like that. We don't like to wake up every day with someone beside us that we despise. Of course. Now, aren't you glad that God gave you free will to choose your lifelong partner? Aren't you glad? Of course. You are glad. Of course. And I am glad also. And I am glad also that God gave me that free will so I could choose the woman that I will spend my life with. Of course, we are glad. And I can see people nodding their head in agreement to what I said. No. And they say that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And I don't want every day, you know, waking up with someone that I don't find beautiful. And I guess you too. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> Excuse me. Now, you know, I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just trying to bring humor in, in, our, uh, in our study. But that is true. But that is true. We might be laughing, with, we might be smiling at that, but that is actually true. Now again, aren't you glad that God gave you the freedom to choose someone that you like, to spend your life with, you know, for the rest of your life? That is freedom. And that is my simple test, how beautiful the gift of freedom is from God to us. Amen. Now, if God did not give us this freedom of choice, this free will, our emotions, your feelings would not matter because we are controlled by God. 
right? They won't even, uh, they won't be any, any true love because true love cannot emanate by force. You cannot force love. If we, have, if we don't have freedom, then true love will not exist. Because again, true love cannot emanate by force. We cannot just force a person to love us. It must be a free choice for them to love us, just like what we are doing now. We have this freedom to love God or not to love God. And that is the beauty of freedom. That is the beauty of free will. And likewise, God wants us to love him using our free gift of freedom, free gift of choice, free choice. And this is the very reason why God wants us to love him with the whole of us, okay? with our whole being. In Luke chapter 10, verse 27, he answered what? Love the Lord your God. With what? With all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind everything about you everything you you love the lord and love your lord and love the, your neighbor as yourself this is a a call to love god coming from our free will from our freedom of choice from our choice not a force will all right now if God forces us to love him, our hearts, I think, won't even matter. Our hearts, your hearts won't even matter. And that's the same reason why we choose the person we want to be with the rest of our lives because of love. And this was brought about by the freedom of choice, by the free will that God had given us. And, you know, God could have created us, would have created the world with only good exist. He could have created that. He could have controlled us, but he chose not to. He could have programmed all of us to, you know, to like him and to do things and to say things that are lovely, but he did not choose that. He chose not to. Because without freedom of choice, genuine love cannot be achieved because all we have is a force will. God treated us the way we are to reflect in us what? The very image and the very likeness, you know, of their character, which is what? Love, justice, mercy, forgiveness, patience, and other else. Now with free will, we would be able to genuinely reciprocate, reciprocate this love of God to us. And we would be able to share this love, the love that gave you to some other else. Okay. So you see the interaction because of free will. Now, with just those classic examples, I hope we saw our connection. We, we see the connection between God's love for us and our free will. Our free will was given to us by God because of love. Now, here is the sad part. Here is the sad part. With free will comes evil. And that is the sad part. That is the reality. Okay. Now, here's the connection. We have love and free will. Now, the sad part, again, there will be evil. So the other side of free will is justice. If there is love in free will, because God has given us free will, of course, there is justice in free will. They say that the criminal justice system in this world is based on assumption of free will. That's the basic premise of the, just, the, the uh, justice system in this world. There will be a corresponding penalty for the commission of the evil or criminal act, the breaking of the law, when you disobey. There will be a certain punishment for that. Now, with which the person freely chooses. If you choose to break the law, then according to the justice system, 
there is a equal punishment for that. And that's where justice and free will comes in. Just like in the Garden of Eden. You know the story in the Garden of Eden when, and, uh, when Adam and Eve choose to disobey God and follow their own whims. What, what happened afterward <clears throat> was the execution of justice by God in Sorry, my, again, my uh, computer, my uh, keyboard made an error. That's not Acts, that's Genesis. So I apologize. I need to replace again my keyboard. I have replaced my keyboard five times already. So that's Genesis chapter 3. I'm sorry about that. So in Genesis chapter 3, 16 and 17, to the woman he said, I will sharply increase your pain in childbirth. In pain, you will bring forth children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. And to Adam, he said, Curse is the ground because of you. Through toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. Genesis chapter 3, 16 and 17. So those were the consequence, the punishment. And in verse 23, therefore the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden toward the ground from which he had been taken. So there is punishment for being disobedient, justice and free will. Now let's go to Joshua. In Joshua chapter 7, verse 1 and 25, the Lord had said that everything in Jericho belonged to him. But Achan from the Judah, from the Judah tribe, took some of the things from Jericho for himself. And so the Lord was angry. Verse 25, the people of Israel then stoned to death Achan and his family. They made a fire and burned the bodies together with what Achan and had with what Achan had stolen and all his possessions. Now, before the Lord gave the victory to the Israelites over uh, Jericho. There was a strict command by God. A strict command by God that everything belongs to him. Okay? And nothing can be taken home. You should not take anything. But Achan did. Okay? So after their victory over Jericho, Achan took something for himself. He hid it. And then eventually he paid for it and this, with his family. Adam and Eve, until now, till this very day, we saw the example of Achan. Justice could not be overlooked by God. Remember that. Justice will never be overlooked by God. Now, why do you think, what do you think would happen if there would be no execution of justice? If there is no punishment, what do you think will happen? There would be anarchy and there would be disorder. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11 tells us, tells us when the sentence is not speedily executed, what happens? The hearts of men become fully bent on evil. The hearts of men fully set on doing evil. Now, this example, the example here is that when a crime is not speedily executed, Meaning, not punished quickly or there's a delay in the execution of, of justice. It says people will start doing what is evil. And what is more, when crime is not punished, what would happen? If there would be no punishment, again, as if nothing happens, there would be anarchy, there would be disorder. You know, And people will, will certainly cut each other's throat so that they could be at the top of the social strata because there is no justice. You see, there would be chaos, there would be disorder. Now people would say, that, would, would say to themselves, you know, we can get away with, with murder anyway. There's no justice system. I can do whatever I can. I can kill people and get away with it. I can steal and get away with it because there's no punishment. 
And what do you think will make of God if he denies justice? What do you think? He's not God. If there would be no punishment by God, if God will overlook, he's not God. And he's not worthy to be praised. For the God who made everything, who made you and I, is a just God. And he is worthy of our praise because he is a God of justice. See? And God will not turn a blind eye. He will never turn a blind eye and pretend as if nothing happens. He will never do that. If God would not deliver his justice, sooner or later, people will just mock God. And they will say, huh, he is just all talk and no action. See? People will mock our God. And therefore, he is not God at all. And again, I, as, I tell, as I said, he is not worthy of our praise. But God is not like that. He showed us that the consequence of having free will and choosing our desire, our evil desire, instead of choosing him, there will be punishment. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 tells us so. It says, do not be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. God cannot be mocked. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. So in our free will, there is justice. There is beauty and there is love in our free will. But in that free will, let us be careful because free will comes the justice of God. Now the second point that I would like to, the next point that I would like to present, the next wonderful gift that God had given to us is the gift of the cross. The gift of the cross. Love and the cross. Again, no doubt, when we see the cross, it reminds us of this wonderful and great love of God toward us. And that is true. We always see God's love on the cross. And that is right. The cross of Jesus demonstrates the, the great love of God towards mankind. Okay? And he proved to us, God proves to us that he loves us by sending his only son to die on the cross. And, you know, he, he lived up to his words. God did not love us just by words. No. He lived up to his words and he loved us with action. What do I mean by that? Because in 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible tells us, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. God lived, uh, lived to this very word, live up to this very word that he loved us not only in words, by words, but with and in action. He sent his only son so that he would show his great love toward us. You see, God's love, it is not just an emotional feeling. God's love, it is not just a sentimental type of love. No, it's not. It is not just a kind of love that sympathizes only. No. God's love is what would I call an empathetic type of love. And what do I mean by that? Because God's love, he acted upon that love. There's an action, empathy. There's an action on that love. So he sent, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. There is an action. Love in action. First John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. In this love, in this the love of God was made manifest among us. How? That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but God, but he loved us and sent his son. He sent his son to show us his love. To be the propitiation for our sins. And that is love in action. And that is God's love in action. It is not just an emotional thing. It is not just a sentimental thing. But it is love in action. See? 
Now, the cross through Jesus Christ, it also revealed to us the great love of the Holy Trinity to humanity. In John 15 verse 13 tells us, greater love has no one than this. Greater love has no one than this. That is here, the top. Okay. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. So without a doubt, the cross, and you are all correct, that the cross is about God's love for us. Now, on the other side of the coin, the other side of the story, okay, as we say, the cross is also about the justice of God. All right? We will see how the, the, the justice of God in relation to the cross, justice and the cross. I don't know if you've watched the movie uh, Law Abiding Citizen. Law Abiding Citizen is starring uh, Jimmy Fox and Gerard Butler. Now in the movie, the wife of Jimmy Fox, or the wife of Gerard Butler and, and his daughter, they were murdered, they were killed. Okay. And the murderers were uh, they were uh, released for lack of uh, evidence. Okay, now Gerard, he was the only witness, okay? and he said that he saw everything. But unfortunately, when he was cross-examined, he did not see the actual killing because he passed out because of many blows, and he was beaten and so many blows to the head. So before he saw the actual killing, he blacked out. But he saw the perpetrators. Okay? They stabbed him and they took his wife and his, and, his, and his daughter. But because of lack of evidence, Jamie Fox told Gerard Butler, it is not what you know. It is what you can prove in court. That's why lack of evidence, the perpetrators, they were released. Now, I said that because in real life, that's happening. In real life, there are people out there roaming freely, just like in the plot of the movie, who are guilty of a crime, whether petty or heinous crime, whose victims' families are crying for justice. They are crying for justice. And they are free because of lack of evidence, even though they did it. Now, there are also those who are in prison who are, not, who are not guilty of any crime, but they are wrongly judged, while the real criminals are scot free. They are living a free life. And those who are wrongly accused and their families, they are also crying for justice. Now, can I have your attention? Listen carefully. It doesn't mean that God does not love that little girl that was murdered. It doesn't mean that God does not love that girl because he was murdered and the killer is scot free because of lack of evidence. It doesn't also mean that God is turning a blind eye by not serving proper justice. It doesn't also mean that the girl who was murdered doesn't matter to God. No. And that is where justice and the cross comes in. That is where justice and the cross come in. Jesus had to die on the cross. He has to die on the cross so that God could show all of us and that little girl that was murdered and those who died unjustly, he could show his justice because those who escape in our so-called justice system they could never escape the justice of god amen? amen they could never escape the justice of god even if you escape the justice of this world in the afterlife you can never escape god's verdict upon you many people say no you know, the Lord doesn't love that girl. There's no justice. Yes, there is. 
in his appointed time i'm telling you in his appointed time in the judgment day all of us we will see that god care for that little children god care for that daughter that girl because he will serve his ultimate justice and those who are free who did wrong who did evil who disobeyed him who got away with murder in the afterlife they will never get away with murder they will be punished you see in the cross of jesus there is justice so jesus had to die so that his ultimate justice will be served and those who deserve it will get it we will never ever escape the justice of god and god will never turn a blind eye if you are unfaithful you will be punished if you are disobedient you will definitely punish god presented him as the atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood through the cross in order to demonstrate what his righteousness because in his forbearance he had passed over the sin committed beforehand and this is god's justice through the cross because of our sins god god's anger was upon us and to appease that anger of god an atoning sacrifice was necessary and this is where jesus and his blood became a necessity through the cross jesus took upon himself he took it upon himself the punishment for for the full measure of man's sin so that we can be made right with god through faith and through jesus death on the cross god demonstrates his righteousness he is fair he is just and upright in his decisions and deeds where mercy and forgiveness will be given to the faithful and justice will be served for the disobedient and unfaithful it talks about justice Punish, uh, punishing those who are willfully disobeyed him and again including those who get away in our system of justice God has never turned a blind eye for he will soon judge all of us in his appointed time in a similar scenario in Malachi the book of Malachi chapter 3 let's start with verse 13 your words against me have been harsh says the Lord okay. says the Lord you ask yet you ask what have we spoken against you you see, God charged the Israelites for speaking harsh against him, for speaking arrogantly against him, because their claim against God was baseless. It was baseless. Their claim is written in verse 14 and 15. You have said, it is futile to serve God. And this is what they were claiming. It is futile to serve God. What have we gained by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the arrogant blessed. Not only do evil doers prosper, they even test God and escape. You see, this has been happening even before our time. And they were telling to themselves, those evil doers, they are living a free life. They're even prospering. It seems like there's no God, there's no justice. But look at the answer of God. At the time, those who feared the Lord spoke with one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a scroll of remembrance was written before him regarding those who feared the Lord and honored his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day when I prepare my treasured possessions, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him, so will... So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Now in Malachi 4.1, the Lord of heaven's army says, the day of judgment is what? Is coming, burning like a furnace. On that day, the arrogant and the wicked will be burned up like straw. They will be consumed, roots, branches, and all. There would be punishment in the appointed time by the Lord. 
You know, sometimes we take shelter in our make-believe idea that a loving God would not send His creation to hell. We hide in that makeshift belief of ours. And that how could a loving God bear to stand to see people, His creation, He is love, to see His creation burning in hell. How could a loving God stand and bear watching people burning in hell? Now, this is a widely spread concept. And as we have seen, this is a wrong concept. Let me tell you, God never sent anybody to hell. I want you to remember that. God never sent anybody to hell. We send ourselves to hell. It is us because we choose not to serve God. So we must not say God sent those people to hell. No. We send ourselves to hell because of our choice. We chose not to serve God. And that is why. And that is our punishment for our disobedience. And that is the justice of God. That is justice and the cross. The reality is God, God doesn't want all of you. That God doesn't want you and I to suffer. That is the reality. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross. And yet we say, there is no God. And yet we say, God is so unfair. He sent those people to hell. No. We send ourselves to hell by being disobedient to Him. God is love, yes. I understand. But you have to understand, God is a God of justice as well. We can see in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord isn't really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No. He is being patient for your sake. Why? He does not want anyone to be destroyed. You see? That is why every morning is a blessing. He wants you to repent. He is so patient with you. That is why you and I, I want you to look at yourself today. Why are you alive today? Why are you alive this morning? Because God is giving you what? An opportunity. Opportunity of what? Opportunity to become a better version of yourself yesterday. An opportunity for you to repent. To come to your senses that you are a sinner, that you are a fallen individual, that you need the Lord in your life. I want you to see that. I want you to see that the cross is about the justice of God, that soon I will be judged by God. If I will be disobedient until my last of my breath, the last of my breath, I will be punished for my disobedience to God. And that is why God said He is being patient with you. He loved you so much. That's why you are still alive this very day, this very morning, because He doesn't want you to be destroyed. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to realize that you are a sinner, for you to come and repent of your sins and be obedient to Him, to be immersed in water so that your sins may be forgiven. I want you to see that. Brethren and friends, Free will is a wonderful gift from God. But there's a consequence in our free choice. The cross is a wonderful gift from God. It shows His love. But the other side of the cross is the justice of God. The cross and the, and the free will. And our free will is a wonderful gift from God. Prudence, therefore, is a must. Prudence is a must as we exercise our free will for in it comes the justice of god the cross highlighted god's love for humanity the forgiveness of our sins and this gives us a sight a sight of our expectation of heaven the cross also serves as the ultimate justice of god rendering his ultimate verdict of punishment and this gives us a sight of the expectation of hell for the disobedient. My dear brethren and friends, the gospel is yours. Our free will and the cross is a wonderful gift. Those are a wonderful gift from God for us. 
Let us value them. For those who have not yet accepted the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to use your freedom of choice to come to the cross of Jesus today. Declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of all, including the Lord of your life, and repent of your sins, and be baptized and wash away your sins, and live a new life with Christ. May God bless us all. Shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation? Good morning.